Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about boost optional class. Let's consider this function get async data. It will get data from this queue and return it as a char. So if the queue is not empty, it will return queue dot back. Else, it will return what? What should I return here? Whatever I return here, it will be a valid char. So I'm unable to convey the information that the queue is empty and the returned value is an invalid value. My best bet is return a null character. But again, this is a valid char. So it doesn't convey the information that the returned value is invalid. So it seems the returned value from this function should not be just a char. It should be a different type that includes all the chars plus a value that indicates invalid value. If you have watched the other video of boost valiant, it seems the returned value should be boost valiant now pointer type char. So the returned value should be either a char or something like a null pointer to indicate an invalid return value. This is why the boost library provides optional. Optional is essentially the same thing, but it has a much more convenient and powerful interface. So if I have a boost optional char op. Now op is uh, optional, but it is uninitialized, which means no char is constructed. And then I assign op equal to a. Now op contains a. So with optional, we can provide the information we need for this function. If the op is not initialized, it means the value is not valid. If the op is initialized, the value is valid. So we can return a boost optional char for this get sync data function. And if the queue is not empty, we return a optional that is initialized with the last item in the queue. Otherwise, we'll just return a empty optional. Now in the main function I can do op equal to get async data. And if the op is not initialized, in other words the op is empty, we print out no data is available. Else, which means the op is not empty, we print out op contains op dot get and end line. So this is checking if op is empty or not. You can do the same thing with if op is not equal to zero. And this get function must be called only if the op is not empty. If you call the get function when op is empty, it will crash. Another way of getting the data is calling a dereference of the op. Note that an optional can be used in a similar way to a pointer, but you should not get the impression that optional is modeled as a pointer. 
because it was not modeled as a pointer, and it could be dangerous if you think it was modeled as a pointer. There is another function called op dot reset. This will reset op to uninitialized state. If you don't like if else statement, you can use another function called op dot get value or z. And in this case, if op is initialized, it will return the data contained in op. Otherwise, it will return a default value of z. So return z if op is empty. Alternatively, you can use the function get pointer to return a pointer to the data. This will return now if op is empty. Optional can store any kind of data. So if we have a struct of A that contains a string name, an integer value, and then we construct an instance of A, then create an optional A op A0. Op A0 is an optional of A, but it is not initialized, and the constructor of A is not called. If I construct the option of A with A, then A is copy constructed into op A. And later on we can use op A as name A value. So here again an optional can be used in a similar way to a pointer. An optional can also store a pointer. Boost optional A's pointer up A P address of A and then I can use the op AP name equal to Bob. Optional can also store reference. A reference op a r a and then we can use op a r name equal to pub so this also changes a dot name optionals can also be used for comparison by using the rel relational operator boost optional int i1 which is in initialized to 1 and uh, i2 is initialized to 9 if i1 is less than i2 then we print out i i2 is bigger So if both are initialized, both i1 and i2 are initialized, this is the equivalent of comparing the dereference of i1 and the dereference i2. Otherwise, if one of them is uninitialized, the uninitialized one will always be considered the smallest. So if we have uh, i3, 
then I3 is smaller than I2 and is smaller than I1. That's all for today. Feel free to check out the other videos I have and see you next time.